This is my custom Bastinelli Knives Anomaly. This is the fourth knife in a series of four collaboration knives that Bastion Cove did with um, Doug Markaita. You can see it's kind of on the karambit uh, platform with that ring, but you can see that the blade is reversed in a Pical style. Uh, the tip is down like a karambit, but the edge is in and the curve goes in the other direction. Uh, this is a Pical style knife and Pical, as a viewer recently uh, informed me, means to rip and the motion, the natural arcing motion of your arm, your elbow, your shoulder, your wrist makes this kind of like a cat's claw in that it enters into whatever you're cutting and tears out as you kind of continue that uh, arcing motion. So it's sort of, um, in a sense, the reverse concept of a karambit, which here, I'll sh show you right here. This is a Fox 599 karambit. And with this knife, you're doing this, uh, among other things. You know, there are, there are a lot of techniques with the, with the karambit, um, but it has a sort of reverse motion to the Pical style. And I really like the Pical, I've grown to love the Pical style of knife because it seems to require less refined action um, when you actually need it. And I am not someone who's like a hardened street fighter. I'm not a hardened knife fighter. I've done training in the, in the, um, in the safe confines of a martial arts school and with friends and such. Uh, but I've never had that sort of engagement, thank God, hope I never do. Uh, but I, something tells me that a lot of the more refined motions and refined movements uh, kind of go out the window when you're fighting for your life and you're reliant more on gross motor skills. And the concept of the downward tip with the inward edge and, and uh, uh, relying on sort of that, uh, that sewing machine motion um, just makes more sense to me. With that, uh, with that tearing claw edge, horrible stuff. Horrible stuff. But uh, for me, it's a, it's an exercise in, um, in well, theory, in the theoretical knife fight uh, that I get in in my head. <laughs> so uh, yes, this is a beautiful, beautiful piece. This is N six ninety CO steel, and um, I contacted. Bastien, he, he had put one of these up on his Instagram with this gorgeous burgundy cord wrap uh, that he does. He does cord wrap on his custom knives, uh, if you ask him, and I just think it's beautiful. And lately I've been into Pical style knives, and I've also been in, into um, cord wrapping, and he does a beautiful job with it. So I ordered that from him and uh, was thrilled when it arrived a couple of weeks ago. I've been carrying it a lot. Uh, and... Well, I've been trying to figure out how to integrate it into my EDC because uh, I prefer to wear this on my belt horizontally up front and so that it can be accessed with either hand. And I, for work, I frequently tuck my shirt in because I'm a civilized gentleman. No, it, it's just, you know, a dress, uh, a dress shirt kind of gets tucked in. And um, so since... The weather has been getting warmer and I'm not wearing sweaters or vests or sweater vests or little jackets and stuff around. Uh, it, uh, now I'm trying to figure out again how to incorporate this into my everyday dress, if you will. Uh, because it would be intimidating to a lot of people for me to just be walking around with this right in front of my belt buckle like this. People would notice it and say, at least say, what's that, if they couldn't figure it out for themselves. So... Um, uh, it's a very small, thin, light knife to carry, but now I'm going to have to reassess uh, how, how I carry it so that I can have it on me a lot because it's just something I love, um, but not freak people out and not be out in the open with it or telegraph that I have this incredible um, knife on me. Uh, Bastion makes an awesome, awesome sheath, which is perfect for... Um, Perfect for uh, carrying on a belt, but also drawing. It fits the blade nice and snugly, but not too snugly. Doesn't rattle. Oh, I guess it rattles a teeny tiny bit. 
but that's all right because uh, it makes it draw relatively easily. Um, yeah, big, big fan of his knife designs and uh, a big fan of this with its custom treatment. I carry uh, a diagnostic, that's his little two finger karambit uh, style knife every day under my uh, work ID. But here's the funny thing, I've been calling it a two finger karambit for the longest time. I don't have it on me, sorry, I'm not at work. Uh, but when you hold it, it's actually more like a pical, more like a ripping knife. Uh, you don't really hold it with the edge out like that. So um, anyway, the diagnostic is a great, great little knife. Love that. I, I have a couple of other of his knives. I have the big Drago Tack, and I I did a review recently of my buddy Ian's um, Bastinelli knives. I think Bastion Cove is a is a definitely an artist and a craftsman. And uh, pretty bad, too, man. You watch him manipulate a knife. He seems to know what he's doing. Also charming and nice. Check out the podcast uh, I've done with him. Uh, so this is out in limited fashion, I believe, without the cord wrap. The cord wrap you have to go directly to him to get. But I believe they are now on Blade HQ and a couple of other places. I just got something on there that's going to drive me nuts. Interesting thing about this knife, you've probably seen people do uh, different manipulations with karambits. Since I'm right under the camera here, I'm not going to attempt to do them, but where, where you flip it like this, and then you have it like this, and you can scoop up under the crotch, or, you know, do all sorts of... Uh, um, you can uh, go to this old sword blade reviews. Uh, Dave is an expert with the karambit, and he's uh, done a lot of talking about them. But um, you've seen the tricks. You've seen the... Uh, they're not just tricks, but they're useful ways of using this ring and using this interesting shaped knife uh, to your surprise and advantage, you know, or to, to your benefit. Um, you can use it percussively, etc., etc. Well, I've, I have found in using and uh, holding this thing, you can do a lot of the similar kinds of things. And actually, some things that are even more intuitive, like flipping it out into this position, which he has a nice uh, jimped stop for, and using it in downward, extended downward slashes, which is a much, uh, which is a very intuitive thing for people. They understand the downward slash. Uh, and if, as long as you can maintain your grip and hold on to this thing, you can reach out a little bit further with this um, and, and execute that kind of surprise strike with it. Uh, having said all that, like I said, I for me, it's all theoretical. It's all in the aesthetic appreciation of this thing and the imagination, um, imagining how I would use it in a pinch if I needed it, heaven forbid. But, you know, it's just not my lifestyle. So glad to have it as a, uh, as a piece of my collection. Uh, let me show it off with a couple of other knives that are relevant. Here it is again with the Fox 599 Karambit which I think Doug Markaida had a, had a hand in designing. Um, here it is with an obvious comparison, the Copus Blade Works, or Copus Design, I think they're called. Elvia, a collaboration with Ed Calderon, who's a big proponent of this style of sort of fruit knife uh, in the pickal grip, downward edge in, tip down edge in. Uh, this is a great little knife. It's got this injection molded handle. I put this uh, little cord wrap on. I, I'm going to do a better job and put a different one on, but I like the small length of it. It just kind of fills up the palm of the hand. And uh, that beautiful 154 cm blade, which is almost scanty ground. I, I do believe there's a little secondary edge there. But uh, if you ask Ed, Ed Calderon, the Mora is a great fighting knife, so I could see why they would put a sort of scandy grind on this. Um, also, the sheaths that you see frequently with these kind of knives um, are set up with this little hook so that you can drop the whole thing in your pocket. And without the cord, I have this cord here for to go around my belt sometimes, but uh, say you don't want anyone to know that you have uh, a knife in your pocket, you wouldn't have this cord. You would just have this floating loosely in your pocket, and then as you draw it, you snag this on the inside of the pocket, boom, and you've got a knife in your hand. Um, so there it is with that. 
And, and here's a, an actual fruit knife. This is a Victorinox fruit knife that I curved and, you know, did, did the thing to and put the handle on, uh, put the cord wrap on and everything. I keep a couple of these. I have one in the car and just one in my collection just to have. I'm, I'm kind of fascinated with the format, I got to say. Here it is with an awesome uh, custom knife, my uh, my Black Rock um, Black Rock knives, Monkey Thumper. I know it's much bigger and a different format, but uh, it's got a ring, so I figured why not put it in and show it off. This is double edged, so you could do a, some of the similar things with this style knife uh, that you could with this in that sort of uh, pulling, ripping kind of uh, action. Though it's not hooked, it could still it could still do a a number on whatever it is you're hooking or thrusting into. Here it is with the Emerson Elvia, also a collaboration with Ed Calderon. This is wearing um, micarta, burgundy micarta scales from uh, Tom over at Blades and Such. Just awesome, just an awesome knife. Beautiful format. And then uh, here it is with a very dissimilar knife, but also something that I love and a small, uh, small EDC fixed blade that I carry with me frequently. This is the Steingraber Performance Knives Shark. Neutral enough handle that you could actually, if you needed it for self-defense, uh, you could carry it. Uh, you could comfortably hold it and use it in this fashion, though it's not at all designed for that purpose. Though with this slender blade, and this man knows how to grind a blade, this would, uh, well, you should see what it does to regular materials. So I would imagine, um, you know, in a self-defense scenario, it would do just fine. All right, enough of this gloomy talk. Thank God uh, uh, that personally I don't deal with this, but uh, there are plenty of people out there who do, and uh, plenty of good people out there who will have a knife on themselves to defend themselves. I think that this is an excellent choice. And uh, not for nothing, I do feel that these uh, thin metal knives that uh, Bastinelli makes really do benefit from a little bit of cordage. Uh, without the cordage, it's very, very thin um, in the hand and everything. With, of course, that makes it way easier to uh, to conceal and to carry and just to stay out of the way. But um, I don't know. There, I, I would consider, if you're very interested, I would consider reaching out to Bastian and ordering one from him and having him put the cord wrap on it because it really, really supplies a nice grip. And it just looks so damn good. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned.